Chilling presents selfies. Uh, she might want to improve her selfie game. This woman will probably think twice before she snaps selfies in the future, since when she did so last Thursday in a Los Angeles art gallery, the result was 200,000 US dollars in damages. The woman was viewing an installation called Hypercane, which was a collaboration between Hong Kong artist Simon Birch and other artists including Gabriel Chan, Jacob Blitzer, and Gloria Yu. Prior to the incident, CCTV footage showed visitors carefully admiring and walking around a room decorated with dozens of rectangular pedestals holding sculpted crowns and other headpieces. Then came the clumsy visitor and her friend. Her friend used an actual camera to photograph the wondrous works. Meanwhile, the clumsy one decided to squat down and snap her selfie, which led to her falling backward into one of the displays, turning the entire exhibition into a game of dominoes. Yikes! After wrecking much of the exhibition, the bumbling visitor actually remained calm and even put one headpiece back onto its pedestal. According to the exhibition's marketing team, three of the sculptures were permanently damaged and others to varying degrees. Factoring in the artist's work time, potential art sales lost, and the repair costs, the estimated damage came out to a total bill of $200,000. Some had speculated the incident was a stunt, but the exhibition confirmed to Fox News that the accident was real and explained it would be irrational for the artists to damage their own work in the hopes of gaining more fame. The art show is already back on display, with one change. Visitors can no longer walk between the rows of art pieces, though photography is still encouraged. Texas selfie statue is both controversial and ridiculously meta. In this day and age of smartphones, selfie sticks, and vanity, a statue depicting two teens mid-selfie is perhaps the most relevant installation for this generation. Some people are only too happy to pose with the statue and basically celebrate the selfie by bringing on the meta. All the meta. Never mind that aliens and archaeologists from the future will think that this is what we're all about, because, well, it, it kind of is. As expected, not everyone was thrilled, calling it a monument to narcissism and a waste of taxpayers' money. Not to be put down, city administrators fired back that the statue was donated by a resident. The offending installation in the city square is apparently part of a 10-piece collection that depicts common activities in plazas and parks. If it's any consolation to the angry Sugarland residents, it's really not unique to the city. The Turks, the Taiwanese, and probably the rest of the world are in on the trend too. Driver risks it all in order to film selfie with his beloved dog. This bloodhound's learned that a good way to cool off in Henderson, Kentucky is to stand at the front of a Jeep and catch a mouthful of fresh air. But the cute dog aside, the driver's trying so hard to show the world his dog that he takes both hands off the steering wheel several times to move the stick. Here, he takes both hands off for at least five seconds in order to adjust the camera. I'm not too familiar with how things are done in Kentucky, but that's certainly not road kosher. All right, dude, we get it. Your dog is cute with half its face blowing off. <sighs> Let's all breathe a collective sigh of relief now that he's done with the selfie stick. But I guess you have to admit, these are some pretty awesome captures. You can carry the selfie drone in your purse. A UK company has launched a selfie drone called the Air Selfie, which is so small it can fit inside a smartphone case. The Air Selfie is stored inside an integrated cover that also fits inside a smartphone. The drone is controlled by an app and can fly up to 20 meters high. Autonomous hovering would take over after reaching a designated height. Users must then use the app to take pictures or videos. The drone is recharged when it is placed back inside the case. The project is being supported by a Kickstarter campaign that has already amassed over half a million euros in pledges. Death threats over a selfie? The Miss Universe pageant contestant from Iraq has been getting death threats in her homeland after posting a selfie with Miss Israel on Instagram. As Iraq's first contestant in 45 years, 27-year-old Sarah Aydin was very popular, but that soon changed after she took a selfie with Miss Israel at our Gandelsman. Aydin and Gandelsman took a photo together with the caption, Peace and love for Miss Iraq and Miss Israel. Although the image has received over 8,000 likes, Aydin was bombarded with hateful comments. But why? Israel and Iraq don't have formal diplomatic relations. The selfie, plus controversy over her choice to compete in a bikini for the Miss Universe swimsuit round, led to Aiden receiving death threats. 
Things went from bad to worse for Ms. Iraq as death threats were also sent to her family who were in Iraq, forcing them to later flee to the U.S. The Miss Iraq organization also asked Aiden to remove the picture or they will remove her Miss Iraq title. Refusing to remove the selfie, Aiden posted a follow-up on Instagram in Arabic, saying the selfie doesn't mean she agrees with Israel's policies, while adding that she apologized to those who thought it was harmful to the Palestinian cause. Ms. Israel appeared on Israeli television last week and defended Aiden by saying she did it so that people can understand that it's possible to live together. Another benefit of selfies. Researchers at the University of Washington have developed a smartphone app that is able to detect the early signs of pancreatic cancer by analyzing user selfies. Bilirubin is a bile pigment produced when the liver breaks down old red blood cells. One of the symptoms of pancreatic cancer is jaundice, caused by an accumulation of bilirubin in the body. The Billy Screen app is used in conjunction with a 3D printed box that controls light exposure in the eye. The app can also be paired with paper glasses that helps calibrate color. After the user has taken a selfie, the app's computer vision algorithms and machine learning tools can spot even the slightest increase in bilirubin levels in the sclera of the eye. The app is designed to help people get early treatment if needed. However, the results are not as definitive as a blood test. Selfie fever sparks huge rise in lip surgery. A record number of lip surgeries were carried out in the U.S. last year as we all went selfie crazy. According to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, more than 27,000 lip augmentations were performed in 2015. The Society puts a 48% increase in lip surgery since 2000 down to the emergence of social media and the selfie. Fuller, more youthful or sensuous lips can be produced with surgical implants or the injection of a filler material. Using an injectable dermal filler is the most common method of lip augmentation these days. One of the most popular fillers is a substance called hyaluronic acid, which occurs naturally in the human body. When our skin ages and loses its youthful moisture, wrinkles begin to form. However, hyaluronic acid retains moisture in the skin and can be used to shape, structure, and add volume to lips. But the anti-aging effects of hyaluronic acid are only temporary. So after about six months or so, you'll need more injections to keep those perfect selfie lips puckered up. More famous tourist sites and museums ban selfie sticks. Selfie sticks are the narcissist's favorite weapon of choice. The extendable arms with a clamp on one end of the phone and a grip on the other have become wildly popular since they hit the market early last year. They've also become an annoyance. Wandering through a plaza of tourists, all wielding selfie sticks can be compared to maneuvering through a room full of blindfolded fencers. The Colosseum in Rome is one of many tourist sites across Europe that have banned selfie sticks. Following a recent episode that saw two American tourists carve their initials into a wall and then take pictures of themselves using a selfie stick. The two women were part of a tour group but had wandered off on their own. All alone and lacking adult supervision, the two decided it would be a good idea to deface a piece of history for a selfie. Museum authorities say that the selfie stick is banned for the safety and protection of all tourists as well as the art. Several museums have already banned tripods and flash photography or just the taking of photos, period. Looks like tourists are just going to have to rely on that old-fashioned selfie stick we had to use back in the old days. Your arm. Heads up, Millennials. If you think your nose looks humongous in that selfie, you're probably right. But going under the knife isn't going to fix it. Really. 55% of plastic surgeons in a 2017 poll reportedly had patients who wanted surgery to look better in selfies, which have been known to distort people's features. Using mathematical modeling, a Rutgers University study found that selfies taken from the standard portrait distance of 5 feet produced no distortion on the subject's nose. But those taken from just 12 inches away made the nose appear 30% wider in men and 29% in women. This is due to perspective. With the camera close to the subject, the nose looks larger as it's nearer to it than the rest of the face. But further away, the facial features are at a similar distance from the camera and appear flat and proportionate. The good news is that there's a simple fix. Just get a selfie stick that can snap your photo from five feet away or have someone else take it. Bottom line, there's easier and cheaper ways to look good in a selfie than getting a nose job. Wildlife selfies good for Instagram, horrible for the animals. Wildlife selfies have become all the rave over social media. Only problem is they encourage animal cruelty. As more people look for pointless reasons to share pictures of themselves, 
local wildlife around the world are paying the price. Charity Wild Animal Protection found a 292% increase in the amount of wildlife selfies posted on Instagram since 2014. The demand for wildlife selfies has led to an increase in local animals being snatched from the wild and forced into becoming crops. Investigators found animals being abused in the Amazon cities of Manaus, Brazil, and Puerto Alegria, Peru. The team discovered green anacondas wounded and dehydrated, kept in small wooden crates, were not being strangled by the throat for selfies. Sloths are snatched from the wild so they can be held by tourists. The handling from all the tourists naturally causes the sloths to freak out. And when they're not needed for photos, they're tied to trees by ropes. Cayman crocodiles are lucky enough to get jammed into broken refrigerators with their jaws wrapped shut with rubber bands. A good rule of thumb. Next time you think about taking a selfie, don't. No one cares. That is, unless you slip and fall while taking it and happen to pass away in the process. In that case, send it over to us and we'll tomo it.